Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I've managed to make one last video before I leave for Japan, so I hope you all enjoy it, and without further ado, let's get into it. There are many closed or abandoned rail lines in the Melbourne area, many of which are quite famous, such as the old Inner and Outer Circle lines, or the Upfield to Somerton line. But there is one line that always seems to fly under the radar. This is Melbourne's Web Dock Line, a freight-only rail line that opened in 1986. Despite having been nearly 8 kilometers long, and having only closed in the 90s, very few people actually know of the line's existence, and there is very little information of it online. A large part of this might be due to just how much of a catastrophic failure this line actually was, as it only saw trains run on it for a total of five years, leading to it being almost entirely forgotten. The line was built to serve Melbourne's Web Dock, an important shipping container terminal located near the mouth of the Yarra River, that carries roughly a quarter of all shipments that arrive in Melbourne. Originally, plans were for the line to act as an extension of the Port Melbourne line, travelling along the beachfront to Webb Dock. Of course, opposition from residents prevented this from happening, and so instead the current alignment was chosen, including a new bridge over the Yarra River. Construction of the line began in 1984, and was completed two years later. The line officially opened in February of 1986, but due to disputes with freight companies, no trains actually ran on the line until July. Controversially, the line was built to the Victorian broad gauge, despite the fact that most of the broad gauge freight network in both Victoria and South Australia was in the process of being converted to standard gauge, to allow easier freight connections to New South Wales. As more and more lines were converted to standard gauge throughout the 80s and 90s, this mistake greatly increased the cost of running the still unconverted line, which usually ran one train every night. Sharp curves near the bridge over the Yarra also limited the speed and length of trains that could use the line. The last train ran here in 1992, but it remained technically open for another four years. The final blow to the Webb Dock line was the conversion of the line to Adelaide to standard gauge, in 1995, which effectively rendered it useless. The next year, the line officially closed, as construction began on the Docklands redevelopment project. The line originally began by branching off just north of what is now Southern Cross Station. It passed through the Docklands area, directly through the site of Marvel Stadium, and this strip of greenery which is now known as Docklands Park. There's almost no trace of the tracks here today. The line then travelled across its own bridge over the Yarra River, which has now been converted to a pedestrian overpass. It's quite well used, and I managed to get this amazing shot of the river from here. From here, the line travelled along the northern side of Lorimer Street, the main street through this area of Fisherman's Bend. This area is filled with small compact housing developments, and is actually technically considered part of the Docklands precinct. This section of the line is covered by the 237 bus, which only operates on weekdays. After passing under the Balti Bridge, we reach the first section of abandoned track, where the footpath on this side would normally be. This track runs the duration of Lorimer Street, and even has two abandoned level crossings at Todd Road and Wharf Road, complete with signs and lights, which have since rusted over, but otherwise seem mostly intact. Sand has been placed between the tracks to form a footpath between these two crossings. There's another bus connection here to the 235, which despite the areas it runs through, somehow managed to achieve a 20 minute frequency on weekends. Here is where the track leaves the road, and heads into the area of the Westgate Park. This section of track is probably the most well preserved, 
with tracks and sleepers still intact and only slightly overgrown. There were still a few trees that had fallen or grown over the rails, though. Someone had also tipped this blue rubbish bin onto the tracks. At the end of Wharf Road, there's a small little entrance to the park, which sees you hopping over the old alignment to enter it. From this point forward, the tracks are paralleled by a gravel walking path, and on the other side, fenced off from the many factories in this area. From around here, there's a well-trodden grass track which takes you to the Westgate Lakes. One freshwater and one saltwater. The saltwater lake used to be pink, but this stopped happening in 2019, and it's unknown if or when the colour will return. The line continues, passing under the Westgate Bridge. There's a noticeable dip in track quality around here, with the rails being covered in weeds. The line then crosses this small bridge that takes it over this ditch, which is still in quite good condition. Finally, after the bridge, the tracks end with the alignment leading across this fence that marks the edge of Westgate Park. The alignment is still somewhat visible along the Kuringa Way section, and you can still clearly see a defined path that the railway used to take. Beyond this point, however, the rest of the track has been ripped up, and the southern section is inaccessible, as it lies on private property. Google Maps actually shows a couple sightings existing here, but I couldn't find any information about them online or any evidence of their existence on Google Street View. So, will the web dock line ever return? Well, this may surprise you, but there's actually a chance we'll see a rail link to the dock return within the next 10 years. Port capacity at Web Dock has grown a lot in recent years and has been putting significant strain on the area's road network. And in 2020, the Port of Melbourne announced their proposal for a new Web Dock rail link, which would follow the old alignment for much of the way before traveling over a new bridge across the Yarra River to meet with the current freight terminal at West Melbourne. Supposedly, this was to get built within the next five years, but now four of those years have passed and the government still hasn't done anything. Despite this, however, it is still likely that we'll see something like this in the future. They can't keep putting it off forever. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.